trusted news source, ABC6 News at Noon. And a good afternoon to you folks. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Casey Kans on this primary election day. We will get to that in just a little bit. But again today, it is Mother Nature taking center stage. I want to show you some viewer video from, uh, we don't have the viewer video. Okay, we will get to that at some point. But uh, basically torrential rain, thunderstorms out there today. Uh, a live look outside right now. You see the clouds. You see some raindrops on the sky cam. Chels. What are we dealing with right now? And also, what, what's the rest of the day look like? Sure, of course, Casey. You know, when we talked last week, we had flooding rain, and a lot of that was happening for inland locations. Today, it's been the opposite. The worst of the rain, the thunderstorm activity, and the heavy rain has been along the coastline. So the opposite of what happened early last week when we had that torrential rain and all of the flooding through much of Providence County. We've been dealing with very strong thunderstorms moving along the coastline this morning and out over the ocean. Uh, some of those had some rotation associated with them. And at the moment, a lot of that heavy rain is continuing to impact areas farthest to the south and farthest to the east. I'm going to zoom in right at, uh, south of Narragansett Beach, where you can see it's Point Judith and Galilee dealing with some of that rain right now. Block Island dealing with some of that rain right now. Even south of uh, downtown Newport is where that rain is. So we're really zooming in on areas farthest south. And for now, much of this is going to continue to move towards the east. That being said, we do still have a flash flood warning in place until 1215 as we've picked up over two inches of rain in many locations in just a very short amount of time. And this line will continue to move uh, eastward as we head into the coming hours. Right now we are overcast in the Providence area, drying out a bit for the moment, uh, even seeing some sun trying to pop through about 70 degrees, very mild, very muggy. A little bit of a wider view for you shows you the first batch of rain and thunderstorms from this morning pushing eastward, but there's more activity off to our west. So while we may dry out for a brief period through your lunch hour and into the early part of the afternoon. Another round of scattered rain and thunderstorms will be possible late this afternoon and into the evening hours before we get rid of this system completely. I'll have a look at your full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Casey? Well, you likely had to dodge some raindrops this morning. You'll likely have to dodge some more if you're voting later today as you heard uh, Chelsea just say it is election day in Rhode Island as you share your voice and your vote the big races that we are tracking start on Smith Hill voters will pick the nominees for the general election for governor today Republican Ashley Kalis expected to win her party's nomination but the race on the Democratic side looks a bit closer with Governor Dan McKee and one of his challengers Helena Bonanno folks trading barbs yesterday we caught up with a few voters out bright and early this morning it was very intuitive, very easy. This is my first time voting here in Providence. Um, so I'm excited to be a part of the voting population and to address the needs of the city and the state. So glad to be able to. I believe that our democracy is absolutely in peril and that it is incumbent on every voter, every prospective voter to exercise that right uh, to ensure that we have a living, breathing um, um, ongoing democracy. And the other key races will be following today. Mayor of Providence, the Democratic nominee, will basically take the job there with no Republicans running. And the 2nd Congressional District with Congressman Jim Langevin retiring. Once again, polls opened uh, bright and early this morning at 7 o'clock. They'll close at 8 o'clock tonight for a full list of the candidates and information about the primary. We do have an election guide on our website, abc6.com. In the meantime, make sure to also download our ABC6 News app. And be the first one to find out who won in the primary as the votes come in we will send breaking news alerts right to your phone new today at noon no students were injured after a school van crashed in taunton this morning the police and school department in taunton telling us this happened on harrison street police say the van's passenger side mirror was hit by a shelby chevy silverado and that chevy uh, apparently tried to pass the van a driver and two students were inside but were not hurt parents were notified and the students were taken to school safely once police cleared the scene. East Providence firefighters busy this morning responding to a fire on Locust Street. Fire officials telling us all tenants got out of the building safely before crews arrived. Firefighters say that fire started in a dryer, possibly because of a lint trap. There is minor smoke damage, but the occupants of that house will not be displaced. A morning water main break causing flooding near Warren and Jefferson Streets in Fall River. City officials say Almond Street to Brayton Avenue will be closed today while repairs are made. This video here shows the aftermath of that water main break, which has been resolved. The water you see here basically just build up 
from the rain we're seeing outside right now. Now, an ABC 6 News update, there are new hours for residents impacted by a boil water order to get bottled water in Mansfield today. Traces of E. coli were detected in the town's water supply, prompting that boil water order Monday. The town's schools had to adapt to adding sanitizer stations. The town has to receive three consecutive negative E. coli tests to get rid of this order. Here's the information you need to know about today. There will be two sessions of water distribution. The hours are 10 a.m to 1 p.m. and then again from 4 p.m. until 7. You do need to bring a form of ID to verify your Mansfield residency. These water handout sessions are at the DPW complex at 500 East Street in Mansfield. Turning to your health, Rhode Island Hospital adjusting visitor hours. Hours will now be 10 until 7 p.m. daily. Some restrictions still apply because of the coronavirus. Only two visitors per patient allowed right now. There's also uh, a, a form uh, that you have to fill out stating that you aren't experiencing COVID symptoms. Masks are provided by Rhode Island Hospital and must be worn at all times. One other note too, hours for visitation are not changing at Hasbro. Still to come today on ABC 6 News at noon, the days long emotional send off to Queen Elizabeth continues today. Her casket en route to Buckingham Palace. Plus, what's next for King Charles? Stay with us. Back now with continuing coverage, remembering Queen Elizabeth II. Today, the Queen's coffin will be flown to London after lying in rest in Scotland as King Charles III continues on his tour of nations. Here's ABC's Inez de la Guterra. This morning, the King and Queen consort leaving Scotland for Northern Ireland as part of their tour of nations. It's very important at this time of morning that the King goes to the four corners of the United Kingdom to meet the people, to also meet the politicians there, because of course Great Britain is Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The new monarch meeting with political leaders who expressed their condolences. My mother saw Northern Ireland pass through momentous uh, and historic changes. Through all those years, she never ceased to pray for 
the best of times for this place and its people. This coming as thousands in Scotland line up to get the chance to say goodbye to the Queen lying in rest at St. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh, the line stretching on and on. I just wanted to be here uh, just to show you know, the family that were here and to show her last respect. The Queen brought here by her children on Monday in a solemn military procession. King Charles III, Princess Anne, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward following the coffin on foot. And overnight in London, an early morning rehearsal for another coffin procession that will be held tomorrow. Thousands of soldiers in ceremonial uniform gathering at Buckingham Palace for the practice run. And the Queen's coffin will spend the night at Buckingham Palace before that procession brings it here to Westminster, where it will lie in state starting tomorrow until Monday's funeral. In Esdalekwatera, ABC News, London. And still to come today at noon, a sign of hope regarding inflation, what today's numbers are showing. And later, it's Tuesday, which means we introduce you to the latest pet up for adoption from the RISPCA. Stay tuned for that. All right, welcome back. Wanted to show you this video here. A uh, look at some viewer video from Narragansett. Earlier today, torrential rain and thunderstorms leading to flash flooding here in South County. I mean, you really get a good sense right there. And, and Chelsea, we dealt with this uh, just last week, too. We're all, we need the rain, no question about that. We've talked a lot about that. But, boy, it's coming down so quick. Today, no different. And that's been the problem with the rain that we've been getting. It's coming down so quickly that it leads to flash flooding. And a few of those cars, unfortunately, doing exactly what you don't want to do when you come across a flooded road like that. Uh, thank you to Dale for sending in that video, by the way, down in Narragansett. Uh, you never want to drive through a roadway that looks flooded. You just can't tell how deep it is. The car will stall out. You'll do uh, incredible damage to your car. Uh, just be use ex extreme caution if you're outside. Now, the good news is some of the heaviest of rain that we had moving through the area uh, through the morning hours is pushing offshore, weakening a bit. You can see earlier we had those dark, deep reds showing up on the radar, really impacting South County and pushing off into Eastern Mass. We dealt with flash flooding concerns out through New Bedford as well, continuing to see that line push farther and farther eastward, a bit drier for spots inland, almost opposite of what we had when we talked about the flooding rain from last week. It was Providence County and inland locations that we focused on 
for the heaviest of rain last week. So we've really kind of flip flop things. Still seeing some steady to heavy rain showers right along Narragansett, right along uh, the western edge of Narragansett Bay, kind of hovering just below Newport and Quidnick Island and continuing to impact areas through far southeastern Mass. But again, nowhere near the heaviest of rain that we saw coming down uh, just a little while ago, but still some widespread heavy rain. As I mentioned, we really have flip flopped this graphic. Just last week on Monday, when we had the horrible flooding through Providence, all of this shading, these deeper shades with uh, inches and inches of rain in a short amount of time happened in the northern portion of the state. And now it's coastal locations today that we've had the heaviest of rain really right up through Block Island Sound where you see some of the highest totals. But there are many spots that picked up two plus inches of rain in an hour. So we're talking about an extensive extreme amount of rain that came down very quickly and of course leads to that flash flooding. We do still have a flash flood warning in place until 1215 for those coastal locations. From there, we're drying out, but there's another round of isolated showers and storms possible into the afternoon. The final push of this system coming through and from the storm prediction center, this line does look to impact more so our inland locations. You can see that slight risk from the storm prediction center of severe weather, which would be thunder, lightning, more heavy rain, potential for some rotation there. Northwest Rhode Island included in that slight chance of thunderstorm, strong to severe thunderstorm activity. It does look like most of that happens to our Northwest, but can't rule out another round of some scattered showers and thunderstorms developing through the later part of the afternoon and into the early evening hours. Now temperatures out there right now in the low 70s range. It's a seasonable day temperature wise, but it is quite humid outside with that breeze coming in from the south southwest. Dew points are in the 70s in many spots, so feeling very uncomfortable. Obviously, primary voting day. It's an uncomfortable day out there. It's a humid day out there, but especially for inland spots, you'll get a little break right now in terms of heading out and not getting hit by rain before another round moves in later on. Now the dew points stay very high through your evening hours, but overnight the dew points drop pretty quickly and we get into some comfortable air tomorrow. And we have that to look forward to. Honestly, after today, the rest of the seven day looks really great. Satellite radar image over the last six hours shows you all that heavy rain along the coastline, pushing offshore, drying for a brief period, but more rain and thunderstorm activity just off to our west, especially focusing in again on our inland spots. You'll see what I'm talking about here. We dry out for a period as we head through the afternoon. Another round of isolated rain and thunderstorms possible as we head into your later part of afternoon and early evening hours, especially for inland spots. We dry out quickly overnight. Tomorrow looks mainly sunny, a bit breezy, temperatures around 80 degrees, and we'll continue to see sunshine through Thursday and Friday. It's overcast, it's humid. You have scattered rain and thunderstorms still possible through the afternoon. We dry out, we clear out overnight, humidity drops. And tomorrow, a bit breezy, but still a nice day. Plenty of sunshine, breeze shifts, comes in from the west. We start to feel much more comfortable. Thursday and Friday look like fall days with sunshine and temperatures in the low 70s, overnight lows in the upper 40s and low 50s. Casey? All right, Chels, thank you for that. Well, a sign of hope today regarding inflation, the consumer price index showing a decline from the historic highs that we have seen. No experts say the numbers are still unprecedented. Here's ABC's Rena Roy with more. A potential sign of hope in today's inflation report, showing prices are up 8.3% compared to a year ago, which is higher than economists expected, but lower than the 8.5% inflation rate we saw last month. This is in part because of the steady fall of gas and oil prices. The national average for regular gasoline, now 370 a gallon, down 10.6% compared to a month ago. President Biden saying Americans are seeing real progress and touting his Inflation Reduction Act, the massive health, climate and tax law he signed last month. Inflation Reduction Act is a godsend. But many economists predict the law will have minimal impact on inflation. Americans still digging deeper into their pockets for things like food and rent. You know, I have to work 60 hours a week just to make ends meet. The economy top of mind for many with the midterm elections right around the corner. It's Senator Tim manager. Scott on Fox News. The economy, inflation and gas prices are the top three issues. In August, prices for groceries were up more than 14% compared to a year ago, a record increase. And now more concerns for the economy as more than 60,000 union railroad workers are threatening to go on strike. Passenger service, supply chains, jobs and supporting industries could be crippled, costing the economy an estimated $2 billion per day. Railroads carry 40% of the nation's long-haul shipments, so a railroad strike would stop those goods from getting on store shelves. 
Urgent talks in Washington underway as members of Congress are talking with unions representing engineers and conductors hoping to prevent a strike. The deadline for a deal is 12.01 Friday. And even though inflation does appear to be slowly cooling, the Federal Reserve is still expected to raise interest rates 0.75% at its next meeting, an announcement on that expected next week. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And still to come today on ABC 6 News at noon, we check back in with Chelsea, who introduces us to Nala. And this week's pick of the litter is coming up next. Another live look outside today with our ABC 6 Sky Cam. Stay close. Pick of the Litter, brought to you by Moriarty's Invisible Fence. Welcome back. It's Tuesday. That means it's time for Pick of the Litter. We have Olivia here from the ISPCA, and you have brought Nala with you. I've brought Miss Nala. It's been a while since we've had an adult it's cat. It's been a minute. It's I been know. a hot minute. You they... guys haven't had a ton of cats, mm -hmm. and we've had some kittens, but Nala, look at how sweet she is. She's such a doll. She's literally purring right now. Aww. She is so, she's such a sweet, sweet I cat. I love it. Tell us a little bit about her. So Nala is a three-year-old, um, we call her a Torby because she's got the tabby look, but the tortoise shell okay. coloring. So she's three years old. She's super duper sweet. She's lived with another cat, and I think she'd be okay with another cat with a slow, proper introduction. Okay. Um, she has only been with us not even a full week, and I don't think she'll be with us much longer, wow. just based okay. on her personality. She's such a nice cat. Um, but she came because she's really chill, and she wanted to represent all of her friends in the cat room <laughs> and uh, be be a cat representative for the SPCA today. Of course. Look at her. She's really just cuddly she's here. She's just chilling. And just wants to chill. <laughs> so you said she's lived with another cat, so with yep. the proper introduction, it would be okay. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, any other restrictions or anything like that? I think, think she'd be awesome with kids. Okay. I think she's obviously very tolerant <laughs> of being picked up and snuggled and everything. Okay. Um, we don't have any history on her with dogs, but I think she's so mild and... and I think, with, again, with a proper introduction and a, a calm dog, I think she'd be just fine. Sure. All right. Sounds like Nala will be the perfect one for anyone looking mm -hmm. for a cat. Three-year-old, sweet, sweet girl. If you are interested in her, you can contact the RSPCA at 401-438-8150 or by visiting their website. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Let's get Nala adopted. Still to come today on ABC6 News at noon, we will check back in with Chelsea. She's got another look at that rainy afternoon forecast out there. That's when ABC 6 News at noon continues after this.
Oh boy, Chels dealing with a lot again today. I know, yeah. more heavy rain in the area. And it's interesting when you look at those rainfall totals, they flip flop from last week. It was Providence County last week that we had the heaviest of rain. And now looking at over the last few hours, you can see it's really been along the coastline. Now that heaviest of rain is weakening, but there's still some heavy rain falling uh, for the immediate coastline continuing to push east. We'll have a period that we dry out for a bit. Uh, and then another round of scattered rain and thunderstorms will be possible as we head through the later afternoon and evening hours. And that will be more so for our inland spots. Really humid outside today overnight we dry out we clear out the rest of the seven day looks good we'll see sunshine uh, tomorrow will be around 80 it's a breezy mild day but becoming less humid and then fall like for thursday and friday temperatures down to the low 70s with sunshine overnight lows in the 40s and 50s oh man all right yeah Chelsea, thanks for that appreciate that <laughs> there <laughs> thank you folks for joining us today as well the news continues first and four for news and weather anytime you can check us out at abc6.com have a great rest of your tuesday